Okay, welcome to what is clearly not an Orbiter 2010 video. This uh, game is called Lunar Flight. I actually bought this game two years ago, but at the time I believe it was in beta or something like that. And I played around with it a little bit, I eh, thought it was okay, but didn't really get too much into it. But I uh, happened to run, a run across it again tonight, and I noticed that it had been significantly updated in the last couple of years, so I thought I would take another look at it. And this time we'll do a little bit of video for it. So I haven't really done anything here except just familiarize myself with the basic controls. So let's just go ahead and click start. And we'll just spend, you know, maybe uh, 30 minutes or so with it. And if it's uh, at least reasonably enjoyable, maybe I'll make a couple more videos and we'll just see how it goes. So I've already created a profile, so I'll hit play. And this is going to be single player. Rating easy, I definitely need easy. That's okay, so we want map one. I don't even remember selecting this when I took a quick look at it before. So we'll go ahead and load this. I actually found out about this game back um, on Orbiter Forum. I believe the developer, the guy that actually made it, he posted a, a message on the Orbiter Forum website, and that's how I found out about it. And yeah, I think you can now get it through Steam, but when I bought it, it was through this other based application called Desera or something like that, which is one of the reasons why I also haven't kept up with it because I don't like having lots of that kind of stuff installed. I've got Steam installed, I'm happy with that. I don't really want something like Steam also, so I guess if I really like this program, I'll probably maybe see if I can contact the author to get my license transferred over to Steam or something, because I don't want to have that Desera program installed just to run this. But anyway, what I need to do here, I've kind of, again, I've spent a couple minutes trying to familiarize myself with the basics. Let me, uh, Maybe adjust the audio a little bit. Some of that uh, radio chatter. Yeah, let me turn that down. I don't really care to hear too much of that. Uh, it has a really slick interface. It's nice. It's quick. It's responsive. Nope, don't want to quit. Continues what I want. And hopefully, I don't think my webcam's blocking anything important. If it is, I'll shut it off. But there's nothing in this part of the screen that you're missing. So, so uh, we need to go to missions. We need to pick something to do here. And we have uh, five missions available. The first objective, the first mission is data survey. And all we have to do is, uh, I guess it doesn't really specifically say, require acquire data at survey location and that's it. And then for that, I guess you get $2,000 and 250 pilot experience points and some kind of bonuses, which we probably won't get bonuses because we are horrible at this game at the point. So we'll accept that. And I guess, okay, so here we get a little bit more data maybe. Acquire data at survey location. Abort or select nav. I guess we select nav. Nav survey acquire data. Hover at location. The distance is 270, I assume, meters. So apparently we need to go 270 meters from here and then hover at that location. And it looks to me that this is sort of our uh, radar. So this we need to go that way. Now the basic uh, controls, I don't really know that well. But let me see if I can figure it out again. I believe you have to press the control key wants to make sure if you just press the space bar it basically activates the hover engine but it only does one burst and then you just start falling again the control key locks it i believe so let me press that first so that's how you hear if you heard if you listen carefully you might have heard that click listen carefully i'll press the control key again yeah so there's a click there i don't see where You can tell which position that's on so but anyway with the control key click then you can press the space bar and it gives you incremental power and you can see the power down here and we need how much do we need to take off 
Looks like we need 35, maybe? 40? Okay, we need 40 just to get up off the pad. And then to reduce power, we press the uh, left shift key. Oops, didn't mean to press that button. Uh, the left shift key, the right shift key does something else. Apparently it fires a projectile. And we want to go that way, so we now use, I, I pry, if I can, if I spend any time with this program at all, I'm going to have to remap these keys so that they're like Orbiter, because I just don't want to get confused. Uh, we press Q to yaw to the left. And where you can see that this radar position is kind of coming around. And obviously the idea here is that we want to get from point A to point B using as the least amount of fuel as possible. There's no kill rotate that I know of. So as we come around to this position, we want to start nulling out that, ra uh, that rate of rotation. Okay, we're almost around, and it looks to me like we even have a target there, that little green bubble. So we're going to go that way. Now to move forward, the most efficient way to move forward would be to pitch over and then use the uh, powerful main engine there, but I don't uh, don't want to try that yet because I'm really sloppy with these controls because they're so unfamiliar to me. Putting in a little bit more power because I can see that I'm actually descending and I don't want that. So now I'm going to translate forward using the W key and that's kind of more like a, a first person shooter game, you know, WASD. So I'm, I am familiar with this control scheme, but I would rather have I would rather, I'm very fast with Orbiter these days, because I've been playing with Orbiter for so many years that I can press those control key, uh, press those keys on the numeric keypad, you know, it's second nature to me. So just moving forward to that green bubble, and apparently we need to get to that point, and then hover in the location, I guess, and that's all we have to do. We'll find out more when we get there, I haven't made it quite that far yet. <laughs> Looks like our rotation's a little bit off. I think I need to rotate a bit to the left. Yep. And we might want to press uh, shift to take away some power. Because if, if we have to get actually to that bubble, then we are too high. And we can switch our cam views over here. This gives us a look at the, I guess, forward vantage point or straight up maybe. And this gives us a look at where we're going. And I think that's probably the most useful at the moment. Yeah, this one's probably the most useful at the moment. And let's uh, start eliminating the forward momentum. So S to reverse thrust, which is like pressing six on the numeric keypad in orbiter. Straighten ourselves out a little bit. We're a little bit, we're a little bit rotated. And again, take away some power just so we can descend. Okay, I'm now passing. Okay, I need to rotate. I think. Okay, I'm basically straight over top of this of this uh, green bubble. I might actually run out of fuel just trying to do this first mission. We need to descend some more, so let's take away some more power. Pressing that left shift key, take away the power. I don't want to take away too much because then we'll drop like a rock. And we're drifting past. So let's uh, let's get rotated to where it's in front of us again. Plus we'll hit the canyon over here if we're not careful, or we'll hit the uh, crater wall. Okay, I think we are rotated where we need to be, maybe. Distance is decreasing now, so that's good. And I believe we need to go forward, so forward translation. Yeah, I can see it there. Yeah. 
and forward translation, a little bit more power, bring up the power to maybe 35, we'll see. The one thing I'm not liking about this so far is that I'm not seeing like, you know, what my vertical speed is. I don't seem to have that information anywhere. Oh boy, we need to bring the power way up. We're going to crash. Uh-oh, we may have a failure. That is unfortunate. Will we make it? Oh, barely. But now I've got so much power that I'm going to have to... Not low on fuel. Well, we almost made it. Okay. Let's get rid of some of this power. We're climbing way too fast. So, I guess we need to get to that position and then hover in place for some amount of time. And we're going to crash because we're almost out of fuel, so I'm just going to... Uh, Eliminate all the power and just let myself crash and we'll reset the mission and try one more time And you can't like right click out on the window here and tilt the camera like you can in orbiter Middle clicking doesn't rotate the camera either But you do have these viewpoints here if you click on that button I've noticed which yeah that still shows up in the view, uh, video playback right above or right below that module you have like two or three different options for that. Chase is the default. So anyway, I'm just going to let myself crash because I don't have much choice. Not sure if there's a quick reset here just to reset the mission. What's the flyby? That's that camera. FSO. Oh, so you can have a cockpit view. This would be... This might be better for me. I prefer being inside the vessel. I think it's much more realistic to have that cockpit view rather than, you know, external cameras. It's just, it's not, that's not, that's not real flying. Okay, so we crashed. Let's try again. So reset. And I probably got time just to try this one more time. Do I want to save that replay? No, of course not. So missions. And actually, the mission changed. So it looks like... Oh, okay. Well, you just have to click next or next mission. So mission two, mission three, or last. And I think the one that we just did was mission one. I think I didn't actually look at the uh, mission number. So let's accept it. Select nav, I don't even know what that does. It doesn't seem to be the exact same mission because the distance is now only one something, 17. So let's try this one. Alright, let me let me try this though. Let me go to that FS view, which now is completely different. Ah, there we go. And let's see if this is better. Although now the information's all in different places, so. Alright, here's our radar. So we need to go that way. And our mission is to hover at that location. Okay, so let's press the uh, control key. And again, that, uh, oh, here we go. In this view, you, you actually have a visual indicator when the control key is pressed. So there it is. Now when we press the space bar, it's incremental. And let me just show you what I mean real quick. Let me turn that off. And let's go to this view. What, when you press the space bar and let go, it does that. So we need to press that uh, control key one time. I guess down here you get you get a bit of an indicator. I don't see anything else on the screen, but when you press the control key, it says power 
0 0.1. So I guess that technically means we're burning fuel at the moment. So now if you press the spacebar, it's incremental, and it looked to me like we had to get to about a 35 power level, which I have no idea what 35 means. I guess it's just a percentage, 35%. Okay, now we're hovering. We can uh, press the E key to yaw to the uh, right. I mean, this, this view just makes so much more sense to me. Flying from inside the cockpit chair is so much more intuitive. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I don't know how anybody plays Kerbal Space Program. You can't do anything. Uh, you, you can't play the game without having the external views and clicking on things. And I don't get it to each their own. Anyway, now let's go forward. It's just yawing the vessel. And we got to be careful not to put in too much yaw. Well, this is nice, too, because now we actually have data. We actually have an altitude readout velocity do we have vertical speed that's probably vertical speed right there so that tells me I can press shift to take away some power yep that's that's vertical speed and we don't need to climb anymore I don't think we need to hover at that location and we're only 110 meters away let's go faster so our velocity is increasing yeah this view is way better you can actually you actually have data so let's switch this screen up here um, maybe that one take away some more power our vertical speed is uh, positive Looks like we're almost already over top with this camera's kind of a cheat view because it's not from the bottom looking down. It's from the top of the vessel from, a, from an invisible camera that doesn't exist. Um, pressing S to eliminate the velocity. This is one thing I would do differently. Pressing W to go forward. If it's It feels backwards because you're... You're, you're thrusting in a direction that doesn't make sense. Okay, we should be... All right, we're still climbing. Let's take away some more power. Let's look at one of these other camera views to see if we can figure out where we're going. See, this camera view it makes more sense because if you had a camera mounted on the bottom of the vessel, this is what you would see. Whereas this camera, you know, where is this thing at? Is, it, is there a big, is there a telescopic pole attached to the top of it that's 30 meters above the thing? It's unrealistic. Okay, we got a warning. putting in some more power so we don't descend so fast but I'm still not sure where I need to go okay this is going to be a failure as well because I'm going to run out of fuel simply because I don't quite understand how I'm moving Am I past the target? Hmm. Okay, I must be past the target because I can see a crater wall right in front of me out both windows. So putting in reverse velocity, uh, reverse thrust to back up. And now we're getting closer to the target. Okay. 
And let me roll back toward the target. I should say yaw. Now I'm getting farther away from it. I just have to figure out, you know, get a feel for how I'm moving. Okay, I'm descending just a little bit. Let me put in a little bit more power. Where is that at? Is it in front of me, behind me, beside me? Does this arrow point to where it's at, maybe? Maybe that's it. And we're gonna crash again. And I'll probably just leave it at that. I don't think I have time to do another part. Boy, I really must kill Rotate right now. <laughs> I think I'm moving t still toward the crater wall. Let me switch camera views here just so I can see maybe where I'm at. So I'm here, the object is over there. Alright, so in the next flight, maybe I can do this. Okay, I forgot about the radar. The radar tells me... Radar tells me where to go. Let me try this one more time, because the video is only 22 minutes at this point. So, let's go back to uh, mission number one. Now I've got a better feel for things. No, do not save the replay. Except... Select nav. Okay, radar, now control to uh, set the thing there. I guess I remember the last setting. Okay, just waiting for some vertical speed. There we've got vertical speed. Okay, now we... Uh, apparently we're also rotated to the right way, so let's just immediately thrust forward. Gain some forward momentum. Ah, oh, there's a velocity vector. It's kind of hard to see. Okay, we're moving forward at... Uh, two meters a second. Oh, this one's really far away. 400 meters, so I didn't select the same mission somehow. Maybe it's random. Let's move forward then at like 10 meters a second, because that's quite a bit of distance to cover. And again, it would be much better to lift up, pitch the vessel over, use the main engines to go forward, then pitch back, but I'm not that sophisticated yet. So we're only 300 and uh, this is out. So we'll probably have to start braking here shortly. What is the mission? Tran oh, transport 2,000 cargo to Delta, okay. I don't know how to transport cargo. Okay, let's start braking. Might have waited too long on that. Let's see our distance here. Velocity here, which is probably really hard to see in the video playback, but it's uh, 3.5. Let's take out some power because we do not need to climb. Velocity vector coming down. 153 meters from the target, although I didn't, I don't know if I have the cargo with me. Still moving forward at almost three meters a second. Okay, we need to yaw just a little bit. Huh. 
Okay, uh, one thing about that distance, apparently it uh, doesn't take into consideration or, or that probably also includes your altitude, so I'll have to remember that. Okay, so let's rotate around till the lines in the center. Let's put in a little more power so we don't descend too fast. I think I understand what I've got to do now. I've got to get that in the center. Uh-oh, we're going to crash. Vertical speed was too high. It was only three meters a second, but I guess apparently if you miss the landing pad at all, it's considered a, a failure. Uh, that went pretty quick, so let's do it one more time. We're still under 30 minutes. So reset. Missions. And again, let's go to... Yeah, apparently these missions are fairly random because mission number one is not the same as it was last time. Okay, so transport cargo, let's just do that one. Let's select nav. Apparently it decides to set its view how it wants. So I press that FS button up there to get basically the cockpit view then this here gives you the the shell I guess if you don't have that on then you're then you have Superman vision okay so we're going straight forward we're going forward for 482 meters press the control key and we've already got sufficient power I would think for takeoff although seemingly not because I'm having to put in a lot more thrust this time. Okay, there we go. Now immediately, I'm just going to start translating forward. And this time, I want to watch to make sure that I don't get any more altitude than I need. I really want to watch the vertical speed. So taking away power, getting the vertical speed more or less to zero, adding in a little more power. little more power okay that seems to be the uh, point of basically like buoyancy so move forward we only have 400 15 meters left to go and I think I just have to land on that platform over there E0, zero, R0, zero. Oh, pitch and roll, okay. Altitude's 45 meters. Now we're actually descending a little bit, so maybe increase powers by a touch. Okay, we're only 200 meters from the whole thing, but that includes our altitude, seemingly. The nice thing about this mission is we're just going straight forward, so at least we're not having to figure out, you know, rotations and such. Okay, 180 meters out, let's break. I don't know what that warning was. I think this camera view is a little deceiving. Oh, here too, it looks like we have our forward velocity there. That's much easier to see. So if you already noticed that, congratulations. Distance is 68 km, uh, meters. Let's not slow down too much. Watch, oh, okay, we're basically zeroed out on our vertical speed. Let's go forward just by a meter per second. Start descending, take out some power. We probably want that view, well... Mm, 
I was going to say that view for landing, but that... Okay, we're only 35 meters out. Most of that is altitude. So take out some more power. Okay, this camera seems to be fixed on the center of the pad, so how do I know if I'm over the center of the pad, though? Okay, we'll use this camera, which I think is a cheat, but we'll use it for now. I'm not going to have any fuel to do this landing, though. Oh, the radar gives us an idea. Okay. So we probably need each of these points. We're not gonna we're not gonna land. Okay, so the only way we're gonna get from point A to point B is we're gonna have to be a little bit better pilot. We're gonna have to tilt the vessel, pitch the vessel over. Hang on here just a second. Yeah. Technically we made it. We're just like on the corner of the pad, we're about ready, to, about ready to tip over and fall off, but we're here. Did it give me credit? Is there is there a control W to shut off the MWS? That's really annoying. So what's this? I guess I made six thousand dollars out of a potential potential ten thousand and I got uh, I don't see where like would say experience points or anything. Okay, well I've got a basic feel for this uh, for this game now. Um, like I said, it's come a really really long way since I first looked at it two years ago. When I first looked at it two years ago, you were limited to this. Uh, like there, the screen was cut into into quadrants. It was cut down the center and then cut horizontally, and there were different views in each quadrant. And I couldn't really get used to that. I don't think there was any way to change that back then. But there's also just the uh, the menu system is a lot better, and overall it's it's pretty good. I think it's uh, I think it's like nine dollars on Steam, nine dollars on Desira, whatever. Um, I don't remember. I think when I bought it, it was only three or four dollars because it was like really early beta or something. So if you liked this, if you thought it was interesting, leave a comment down below. Let me know. Maybe I'll do more of these videos. And I will uh, see you in the next video.